And like, if I'm having trouble, like right now, it's, 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 it's just not accurate. I keep going back and forth. I keep just hitting the X key, going back and forth here, trying to get these edges, and it's just not not looking right. So what you can do instead, if you're having trouble doing it that way, you can just, we'll just uh, again fill with white. That was, um, actually we were filling with black. So black was the foreground color. So we hit Alt backspace to fill with the foreground color. Um, so if you're having trouble really getting an exact selection, you could also use the pen tool to start off. And what I'll do is I'll just make a point. Uh, I, I just noticed uh, the pen tool, I'm going to hit escape, and then actually, control. I'm just going to go through my history and go back before I added the, the pen tool there. The pen tool by default was on shape layer, so it was creating a shape layer. Right now all I need is a path, so if I just click on the the middle option here up top, that'll create a path. So I'll start over. So I know it seems kind of odd that I'm making a path, but what I can do after I make the path is I can convert the path to a selection and then use that selection for my mask. Or if I wanted just a real hard edge selection, I could make the, the path my mask. And that'll make a vector mask. So I'm going to go ahead and do that show you how to make a vector mask. So I'm just going to cut it here just to, for time's sake. We'll just go back. Pretend that I did a really good selection there, a really good uh, mask there, path. Um, so if I go in path palette, I have my path here. If I just control click on it, we can make our selection. And we can just, uh, right now, I'll just control backspace to fill it with white. And then that made that our mask. Or if I uh, if I make my mask all white, go back to my path, and just click on the path to load the path, and then just hit my mask button again, then it's going to make a vector mask. The vector masks are good because you can um, you can adjust it at any point pretty easily with either the pen tool or the direct select tool either of the selection tools and then you can edit it at, after the fact so now I can edit the mask so you can have compound masks too so I have this real rough edge mask and now if I click on my my pixel mask I can um, I can paint on top of it so it's creating basically a compound mask that allows me to um, if I hide my path there you can see it a little bit better so it allows me to have that real hard edge vector mask with the pixel mask in between. So th this this can be good like let's say um, I didn't want the effect this I didn't want this layer to to be shown fully all the way through. Maybe I wanted to do a gradient so that it gradates up. That that'll create like a nice a softer transition. If you're trying to add um, shadowing to an image to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic or give it more depth or make it more dynamic um, you can use this effect um, to do that um, also sometimes you you might have to use um, you might have to make several adjustments on one area uh, let's say this this yellow uh, triangle in the, in the umbrella I want to do several different things to it maybe I want to desaturate a little bit I want to lower the saturation I want to maybe brighten it and then I also want to change the color so um, what I'll do first is uh, we'll just do select color range but I'll do a lasso around it and then I'll do select color range So we have our selection. And then I'll just do, I can do curves. 
or brighten it. And then I, I need to select that again, so I'll just control click on my mask to, to load that mask as a selection. And then I'll do another adjustment layer for hue saturation. Desaturate a little bit. And then uh, maybe, a, oh, now I, do, now I want to do another curve adjustment layer, or no, actually a color balance layer for um, making it more red. Okay. So now we have we have three different adjustments for this one area, and we have three different masks. So if ever I had to go back and let's say edit the mask a little bit, maybe I noticed that um, I want to uh, make a hole, make a hole in the mask. What I have to do is I have to I have to go through each layer and try to get exactly right, right there. And then, like so, every time you every time you change the mask, you have to go back each layer and you have to change it like that. Or a better way to work would be to uh, just control click on one of the masks to load the selection. Select, um, just shift select all the layers to select all the layers. And if you hold the shift key down and click on the folder icon in the bottom, that'll basically put them in a new group. And then what you do is you apply the mask to the group. And then we'll just fill all these masks with white. And this way, I only have to adjust one mask. So if I need to fine tune a mask, I just adjust it once um, instead of you know three times or how many times you have, how many layers you have in there. Uh, you just basically have one mask to rule them all there. So um, I can go back and forth, and it, it just—it's a time saver. It also saves in your file size because it, it does shrink your file size a little bit. So it just makes sense if you're doing multiple adjustments to one area um, to just put them in a group and then put a mask on that group. Now, what you can do is you you can create uh, compound masks. So maybe I wanted the hue saturation. I only wanted to uh, desaturate it on the uh, bottom half of it. So again we'll do a gradate, we'll do a uh, put a gradient on it and we'll gradate from the, the bottom up. And we can see, we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see better. Um, basically this is called a compound mask where we have we have the original mask that, I'll have to change the the color to uh, blue Okay, so we can see the original mask just selected basically most of most of that yellow triangle there, and then if we click on the gradient gradient mask, um, we can see that the, the effect is a, a compound mask. So this hue saturation only affects everything that's that's selected in the group. It's masked in the group there. It only selects that the yellow triangle area. And then also has a compound gradient. So between the two, it's it's narrowing basically what it can affect. And um, so if I put the hue saturation above, you can see that the it's going to desaturate the whole image. And when I put it back below, then let me put it below the color balance, we'll, we'll we see that it's only affecting that part of part that part of the image there.